Hi guys, and welcome back to this Model Engineer's Workshop. Today in the workshop, suction and discharge. Is that suck and blow? Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're going to be making the suction and discharge fittings for the water pump that we're working on. So this is a piece of 14.3 mil hex brass. Uh, got a bit of a rough end on it. So we'll face that off in the lathe. We're going to turn this down to suit the quarter BSP um, die, which will be going in the lathe tailstock holder. And we'll get that threaded and trimmed up as we normally do. Cut a thread relief so that it sits down nicely. Do that, then I'll be parting that off to close enough to length. Make a second one. Then I'm going to use this little piece here to uh, make a split bushing so I can hold those threads in the 3D or chuck for putting the thread on the other end of those two bits. So this time I'm actually going to show you making the split bushings. I showed you a couple of times ago, a couple of videos ago, the split bush I used in the lathe for making the oil cap cups, oil cup caps, get that the wrong right way around. And uh, I'll show you making one this time. It's dead easy. Nice, simple little turning job. Right, so I'm going to get set up in the lathe. And, uh, yep, I'll bring you back. Right, guys, so I've got that little nubbin of brass in the, in the lathe. We're just going to face it off. The hole in the middle is not going to make any difference because we're going to put putting a hole in it anyway. Don't need to worry about the outer surface. We're just going to turn a nice little shoulder, probably only about 3 mil, maybe 4 just so that when it goes into the drill, ch the lathe chuck, it's got something to sit back against the three faces of the three jaws. And then we're going to uh, part it off probably at about six mil deep. So three or four, no, maybe seven or eight. We'll see what we can get out of this. It's only a small piece of brass. You don't want too much because it's just going to affect the spring on it. So we'll get the tool going in. We'll just give it a quick face off. Turn down, turn the shoulder, part off. Uh, oh, we've got it. And then once it's turned around, we'll mark it in the lathe with jaw, with jaw one, and uh, then we'll drill the hole so everything stays concentric. Okay, here goes. <laughs>
Right, so that's the shoulder turned. Just going to get my parting tool set up now. I wonder if I can get away with using the little one. I know I need to go to the big one. Let's have a look. See, uh, little one, is that going to have enough reach? Probably not. Let's go with the big one then. This one has a slightly longer reach, but it's got a fatter carb, uh, fatter indexable tip on it. So we'll just get this lined up. You don't need that shoulder to be of any specific thickness. So that's two and a half mil. That's probably about right. So if I wind in about that far, that'll give us a nice little shoulder to work to. Right, part this off, lay it on 1200, do the power feed on the across, and uh, that'll come off. And then we'll get it into the chuck the other way around and finish the other side and get the hole drilled and tapped. Here we go. <laughs> go one embryo split bushing that's just a bit that'll knock off when we put it right back in the chuck and turn it around so let's get rid of that tool just wind that out of the way chuck key into number one right loosen that off now this is how the chuck key the Split bushing works. I'll just get that into the nice and tight up against the jaw faces on the three jaw. As always, just go around all the holes in your chuck just to make sure everything's tight. There is always a little bit of movement. You don't need to crank down on it too hard. I'm going to wind this in right before we do that. So, as I've always said, my chucks have a center pop on them on the top so that's up here so that hole get that into view so that hole there is number one hole this is number one chuck now with my automatic automatic center punch lining up as best i can on the middle of that jaw i'm just going to put a center pop that means i can put it back into this chuck every time in the same place right so that center pops in there now hopefully you can see that i can so we'll just clean this off. This face is pretty good. It doesn't need to be anything special. And then we get the hole drilled. The Zeus charts that I use said 11.8. Well, I haven't got 11.8 mil drill for as, a, as a tapping size for a quarter BSP. So I'm going to go 12. It's only going to make the thread a little bit uh, less deep, which as it's going to be clamped in the vi in the chuck here, in the vice, it's not going to make a hoot on that really. So here goes. Let's get this cleaned up and we can get some holes drilled. Get the hole drilled. <laughs> That was as easy as that. Right, got the drill chuck key. Let's get a couple of drills. Uh, I need a couple of drills, yeah, probably. Let's have a couple of drills. So that's the next one. So this one goes first. Yeah, 
All right, that's the real check in. We're only going through a little bit of grass, so I don't think we'll need to check for the first drill anyway. I don't think we'll need to change the uh, speed on the light machine. So here goes. guys I'll just change things around we'll get set up for tapping the hull right so just changed uh, the drills out got the, the tap in there this is brass so it shouldn't see, need any lubrication I'm just gonna I shall try this under power feed let's go to power feed it'll make life a lot easier especially being a big tap there we are that will get us down to 65 rpm just make sure we've got plenty of room for the tap to go because it will just pull the tailstock along as it goes. Right. Here it goes. Really? 65 RPM? That seemed damn fast, didn't it? That's the slowest I can go. It is too. Right, okay. Uh, so I'm going to get this. As soon as it starts to bite, I'm going to drop it and drop the power off and we'll finish it off by hand. go I don't know that was frightening Let's see if I can get that to turn up a little bit more and I can maybe back it out right uh we'll do a yeah I'm gonna back that out and uh no 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 hang on no I can't okay drop the machine into neutral let's pull that round by hand there we go Sweet. Right, that looks like it's gone all the way through. Nice, easy cut. Right, so put it back into gear. And let's go backwards. Let's go reverse. Just going to pull on the tailstock as well at the same time, just to make sure it comes clear. There we go. Wow, that's a hell of a thread in there. Okay. A little bit of a burr, I'll just need to take that off. Don't look, that one should do it. Yep, that's the one. So let's uh, take the tap out, put the countersink in. And I'll just put a very light countersink on that, just to take off that burr. go yep there we go that seems to have the collie wobbles on it but uh, that's just because of the thread in there it's not going to affect it it's not as if the concentricity is out because it ain't right get this out get this into the bench vise with the soft jaws and i'll bring it back right oh guys so mounted in the bench vise soft jaws you can just see there at the point tip of my scriber that's the center punch that I put in so jaw number one over here, jaw number two over there, jaw number three over here. Now, the trick with the split bushings is you've got to go between the jaws. Okay, so in this case, because I've got that one going over that way, I can basically go straight through. So, junior hacksaws pretty much everyone's got one of these, I'm sure at home. It'll be easy for the first bit, and then I'll get harder further down once you hit the full width of the metal. I'll cut in, yep. Just in case of going through. Now 
getting close. Slow it down. There we are. Broken through. Right. So, I'll take that out. Gone through a bit crooked, but as I say, it doesn't matter a hoot because it's between the, two, the jaws. So, that is a split bushing. In this case, it's a quarter BSP, BSPP, British Standard Pipe Parallel, because of course a pipe thread is normally tapered. So, as the center punch for number one jaw, number two is over here, number three is over here. That will then go into the lathe chuck when I'm ready for it. And as the three jaws clamp down, you can just get one or two thousandths of an inch, or I don't know, what's that, a hundredth of a millimeter closure. You'll squeeze it closed and it will just clamp down on the thread that's going to go in there so you're not going to damage it. Right, so there you go, guys. First lesson of the day. Yeah, it's, uh, it must be a Sunday. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's how you make simple, easy, split bushing, reusable. Don't throw them out. I'll mark it up eventually with a bit of market pen. Tell me what thread it is, and they'll go in a pot. And useful for a long time. All right, guys. I've set up now for the fittings themselves, and we'll start getting things made. Okay, here goes. Okay, guys. So now we've got the split ring made. We're going to make the two fittings. They're both exactly the same. So I'm going to turn this down. This is the 14.3 X brass. I'm going to turn it down to about just under 13 mil. Uh, quarter BSP uh, thread has a major diameter of 518 thousandths, which is 13.15 millimeters. Uh, I'm not going to make it as fat as that. I'm going to take it down to about 12.9. For about 12 millimeters, we're going to thread it. We're then going to drill, center drill, and drill through what we need, which is 7.5 mil. Then we can part off the thread to length, so we end up with a good end put the relief in and then part the whole thing off in one go. I need two of those, so I'll show you making one. And uh, then we'll move on to making number two, which I'll do off camera, of course. Here we go. Touch off. So that's got the corners off the hexagon, so we should be about 14 mil. As I say, we've got to get down to 12.9 probably, just to make the thread a little bit more interesting. Here we go. We're at 13 point five 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 six six five thirteen point seven. So I need to take eight off that. So let's do it in two goes. Here we go. Two. Let's just double check ourselves to make sure that should bring it down to about 13.3. Get it to register properly. There we go. 13 points. Yep, 13.25. Right, so let's just take another little bit off that, bring us down to about 12.9, 12.85. Here goes.
all being well that should be just down to the right diameter for putting a thread on so we are at 12 points seven five eight eight five yep Let's have a look i reckon that says 12.85 which is going to be close enough that's 0.3 of a millimeter under the actual theoretical maximum size what we're going to do now we're going to take this tool off we're going to just put a chamfer on there to make life easy for the thread threading die when we get started move that out your way so you can see so of course handle a th file with a handle on it So now we're going to centre drill and drill down to a depth of about 40 mil because we need at the end we need about 23, 25. Centre drill's already in the chuck and I've got my seven and a half mil drill ready with my little blue line on it so I can see how far I've got to go. So let's get everything into place. There we go. Tail stock down and we'll drill this, get this drilled and then it's onto tap, onto threading. There we go guys, so that's the hole drilled. Bump the chuck out, drill the chuck out the tail stock now, change that over to the tapping head, the threading head. There we go. So that's my that's the die in there. Can you see? Yep, there we go. Nice big quarter BSP die. That's that in place now. We will drop this down. No, we'll do this by hand. That's a very short thread. I'm not going to do it by under power. Just get everything set up. Move this in. So that the threading head has something to bump onto. Stop, save me having to hold it. So, as usual, guys, pull the chuck this way, turn the tailstock handle that way till it starts biting, and then keep pulling by hand. So, let's just wind, lock the tailstock down. Make sure we've got some good contact. And Right, could be biting already. Yep, there we go. Yes, I think so. Yep. Here you go. Tough old thread, tell it. And as always, you'll know when you hit the end, hit the maximum you can go, because like that, you can't turn it anymore. Right. Let's just pull this back off here now. Let's see what kind of thread we've got. We should have a good one. It's a relatively new die I'm using. Move that out of the way now. 
and that is a lovely sharp looking thread hopefully you can actually see that as well so if i grab the split dart split bushing off the dirt off the bench behind me should be able to wind that on there there we go and that is going to be lovely so when we put that back in the chuck the other way around we'll be able to machine the other end and put the thread on that as well right so now let's have a look i need the I'm just going to use the wide parting tool at the moment to put the thread relief in. Not an exact, not an exact science, although I dare say somebody will tell me I'm doing it wrong. So I'm going to put the thread relief in, change the small uh, parting tool, part the end off here to length, and then we're going to go from there back, full length, part it off, plus a little bit for cleaning up, and then we have to flip the whole thing around and put it in the split bushing. Right, here goes guys. Oh, go put the gear, lathe into gear. There we go, I think. There, right, that should be it. Hey, right, all doing well. We'll get well hit it this time. There we go. Just going to change that for the little parting tool. Quick reset. So we know we need to have nine millimeters. So we're just going to turn it up. Let's do it the other way. Let's just go from there to here. No, that's not going to work, is it, Andrew? Of course not. But, so. We need to go from here to here. That's it. We're just in contact. Set the top slide to zero. So we need to come back this way. Nine plus the... Th no, we don't. We just need to come back nine. Three turns and 96 divisions. So we'll call that three turns and 100 divisions. So one, two, three. And 100 divisions on this machine is about there. So we're literally just going to part off a tiny little washer off the end. Here goes. There we go. All nice and looking tidy. That's the little piece that we just turned off, that raggedy end on the, uh, when the die makes cut, starts cutting. So we've got a nice clean seat there because this actually does form um, a seat for the valve in the pump itself. Just reset the top slide to zero again now. A fresh zero, so wind that back. And we need to have 23.5 millimeters plus a little bit. Well, 23 and a half plus one and a half for the width of the parting tool. That's 23, 24, 25, 25. We'll just go 10 turns up. Do you give me about half a mil at the other end to clean up when I'm done? So 10 full turns. So let's get back to zero. Here we go. Clear that. 10 turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 turns. We're well clear of the chuck. Everything's free. That's good. Right. Let's get this parted off, guys. And then it's number one. Then I'll uh, give you a quick look and then I'll go off camera and make number two. Length. We've got to just clean that 
trim that bit off when we put it around the other way. Cut this down. I believe it's like 12 or 13 mil from that end to here. Leave a little kind of spanner piece, I suppose you'd call it. Thread the other end. And that end then also has to have a, sh a big chamfer put in it. This is the valve seating end. So because that has a little shuttle valve running up and down in it with an O-ring. So that's a nice fresh surface for that to run on and to seal. Right, we're going to go off camera, guys. One more to make. And when I've got the split ring back in the chuck and uh, one of these screwed in, so it'll go in that way, um, I'll bring you back and we'll do the other end. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Right, okay, guys, so got the second one made now. Just run the little threaded bushing, split bushing onto it. As you can see, it's quite a says loose fit. Uh, now, of course, we put on there center punch. It's just under there, just there. That's it, you can see it. So, the center punches on my chucks are here. So, the hole nearest that is uh, hole number one. This is then jaw number one. So, we're going to line that center punch up as best we can with the center of that chuck jaw. And then we're going to tighten it up. Now, of course, in tightening that up, it will close that little gap we put in there with the junior hacksaw just a thou or two, which is all it needs. I'm going to go around and do all three holes in the chuck. There's always a, a little bit more. Right, so that is not going anywhere. Right, so we need to get the tooling back in. out, set the zeros, right, that's the zero set, and now I'll just check the drawing, but I believe we have to go in 13 and a half, yep, 13 and a half mil, that we've got to go down, and then we've got to thread that the same, and then we will uh, put the thread relief in, we'll just make sure that face is nice and clean and tidy, take a little bit off it. And then we have to drill, put a 60 degree cone in there, which of course is the same as a center drill. So what we're going to do, nice big chunky center drill here. We're going to go in there and put the 60 degree chamfer in that to hold when we're done. So let's have a look. 13 and a half mils, five turns and 15 divisions plus 25. So five turns and 40 divisions down till we get it to 12.85, 12.9. And then we're going to thread it again. Here we go. Touch off. One, two, two, four, five, and forty. Let's just measure that. As you can see, there's just literally about a mil, mil and a half of hexagon left, which we'll need to clean the burrs off. That's just enough to put a little bit of a spanner on. It doesn't need to go into the pump tight because, of course, it's going to have some kind of thread locker sealant lock tight stuff on there. We are at 14 point, sorry, 13.95. We've got a, just over a mil to take off. So let's start off with about that much and then we'll remeasure. Mm. 
all being well, that should have taken about 0.8 of a mil off it. Now let's have a look, we will be very close, if not just where we need to be. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're at 13.25. 0 0.4 of a mil to come off, so that is going to be 10 divisions on here. There we go. That bit. Yep, right, this will be the last cut before we start doing the threading. <laughs> Tight fit with the calipers. Twelve points seven five eight. Yep, that's close enough. There we go. Right. So let's have that out of the way. Let's get a chamfer on, and then we'll get the threading done. Quick change of plans, guys. As soon as I've got the drill chuck in, the tail stock at the moment, let's do this nice chamfer in the end hole so it saves changing out. Just need to turn that up. There we go. So I've got this nice big center drill in here. Up down the tail stock. Here we go. Looks about right. Hopefully, you guys can see that. I'm zoomed in fairly tight. Let's just pop out the drill chuck. Put in the bedding head again. There we go. Right, back to threading. Pop the tail stuck down. Move that. Slide in place. Right, so there we go. Yeah, we're going to be able to ride the handle on the front edge of there. It's not doing any damage. Drop the lathe into some form of neutral gear. So it's not going to take my fingers off. Right, wind this forward now. And as always, do the two way twist. There we go. Should be able to wind the tail stuck back a little bit now. And we're cutting. I think he says with a smile. Yep. Right. Man, that's tough. Ah, that's easier. But we are definitely moving. I just keep going till the till the lathe won't go anymore. Easy as that, really. Right. Wind this back off. I'll have a look at that thread. That can go out the way. That's a nice clean thread. A few foot burst to take off. Oh, nice surface there too. Right, just going to put a thread relief in there. Use the big, when I say big parting tool, I mean wide. As I've said before, nothing exact just to allow that fitting to go down flat. Right, 
Let's put this back in the gear. That was it there. Sounds about right. Put it up there. How's that looking? Yeah, that'll do us right. Here we go. Now, you gotta, there's no way in hell you'll undo that at the minute because it's clamped in the live chuck. Where's my center pops gone? There they are. Number one, number one. Yep, so I'll just pop the whole thing out. And that should hopefully, oh, it doesn't want to unscrew. Right, just give me a second, guys. I'll get this loosened. We can have a look at it. So let's get a spanner on to that, shall we? I think. Did that one fit it? That, as you can see now and does. Nice little, come on, focus. Thank you. Nice threads on both ends. That's the flat plane end for the valve to, for the O-ring to come on, sit on. That's got the 60 degrees in it. I think that's just to allow the water to flow a little easier. This little flange here now yeah, just needs to be cleaned up. And that is either the suction or the discharge fitting done. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Right, I'm going to go off camera again, guys, and uh, make the second, and I'll bring you back when we're on the bench. All right, guys, back in a tick. Righto, guys, so that's going to bring today's video to a bit of a close. So, as you can see, two fittings, one's suction, one's discharge, suck and blow. doesn't matter which one they are, they're both the same. You can see the sh chamfers in the end there. Nicely threads the little thin um, hexagon still left. I just cleaned those up with a needle file. So, so what have we learned today? Learned how to make a split bushing. Learned how to hold things in the chuck so you don't damage the threads. There we go. Easy. Easy as that. Okay, guys, give me a tick and I'll be right back. Right, guys, that's it for today's video. The two little fittings that we just made, the suction and discharge fittings for the axle pump. These now go into the pile with the yoke that we made a few videos ago. Uh, a small pile at the moment, but it'll be a big pile when we get there. And when it all goes together, all those small parts make it into a big part, which is the axle pump itself. All right, guys, this is the chef saying, as I normally do, if you can find it in your heart and soul, to give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell. If you're a watcher, please subscribe. All the motivation I get from you guys is greatly welcomed. And every now and then I do get somebody asking me a comment or a question. Uh, I answer them when I can. All right, guys, this is a chef for today signing out saying see you later.